All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started. Thank you for joining the Prospect Heights Public Libraries program today. I'm Terry Campbell, your host. We wanna welcome back birder and photographer and world traveler, Mary Lou Mellon, and she's gonna share the birds of the Chicago area. Welcome, Mary Lou. Thank you, Terry. I'm sure pleased to be back uh, talking to the, the uh, Prospect Heights Public Library group. Um, I just want to say up front, uh, I am indeed a world traveler and I am indeed a birder. I'm not an ornithologist or I undoubtedly didn't even take biology in college. So please understand that what you're hearing from me and my are my opinions and my experiences. Um, I uh, am really pleased to share my avocation with you. Many people are um, oblivious to birds. I sure was. When I started getting interested in birding 20 years ago, I thought I had to get out of Chicago to find birds other than robins and cardinals and blue jays. I couldn't have been more wrong. The photos that you're gonna to see today are mine. And most of the shots were taken right here in the Cook County Forest Preserves, the lakefront, and even out the windows of my condominium here in Northfield where I live. I hope you'll be surprised at the, surprise, at the variety and beauty of the birds found in this area. Just a few comments. A miracle happens along the shore of Lake Michigan every spring and every fall. It's called bird migration. Few people are aware of the magnitude of the miracle. Literally millions of birds migrate through Chicago area guided by a north-south line that we know of as the shore of Lake Michigan. Bird species have evolved to follow a special migration route called a flyway between points as far as South America and up to the Arctic Circle. So, and many of them migrate right through Chicago. Uh, ornithologists and birders worldwide acknowledge that Lake, the Lake Michigan shoreline is one of the most important flyways for migrant songbirds, hawks, falcons, owls, gulls, terns, and shorebirds. Amidst the uh, river of birds flying through our area, more than 355 species of birds have been recorded. So where are these birds and why don't you see them? Uh, mostly, for starters, mostly the songbirds migrate at night. So it's dark and you don't see them. And if you were out, if you weren't sleeping, you might hear them. Uh, but they do come down to earth during the day to rest, feed, bathe, and wait for favorable winds to carry them either further north or south. So you just do have to get out to, to see them though. You have to look in the appropriate habitat, which is in many cases uh, like our forest preserves or our grasslands. So in Chicago, spring migration uh, uh, month is, is May. And for birders, May is simply a combination of the 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's Eve all rolled into one. Uh, the month of June is breeding season around here and things quiet down. Birds are on territory. Females are on nest laying, uh, sitting on eggs. So, um, but you can bird around Chicago um, 12 months a year and have a productive outing each time. So we are going to get started now. Um, as you are looking at the uh, opening screen, uh, some iconic birds of our area uh, on the upper left is a rose-breasted grosbeak, and, and that really is indeed a grosbeak. Uh, in the upper right is a red-headed woodpecker, not a downy or a red-bellied, but a red-headed. Lower left is a downy woodpecker, and um, lower right is, is the uh, red-winged blackbirds, um, who, who have already left for the winter uh, now. So moving right along, we'll start out with a bird that many of you will be familiar with. And of course, it's not going forward. Mary Lou, sometimes there's a delay. There we go. Uh, what you're hearing now is a little bit of um, dawn chorus. When the sun comes up, birds start singing and they can to communicate. And that's uh, what you're hearing. So uh, Terry, this, this meeting is being recorded by the host is right in front of my screen now. Can I get rid of it? Absolutely, thank you. How do I get rid of it? X the right hand um, corner, there should be a little X. Uh -huh. 
I, I, I can't even see my pictures. I, I'm going to go ahead, but I. Oh, uh, Mary Lou, go, go ahead and oh, here, say here. yes. I've got it. I've got it moved off off the side. It's okay. All right. So we're starting with the beautiful American goldfinch. This is, of course, the male. And in the bird world, the males are always flashier than the females, and that's probably because of that. Uh, females are the ones that do most of the sitting on the eggs and uh, that sort of thing, wanting to be cryptic. <laughs> this is the American goldfinch in the winter plumage. So as you can see, they, they, um, in the winter, if they were bright yellow, they would be very obvious. It's not good for them to be obvious. Birds only uh, only habit, uh, only way to hide from hawks and, and other people, uh, birds that would harm them is to be cryptic. So this is why they turn these dark color. And this, uh, this is the sort of feeder you might have at your own home, feeding of finch, finch seed. This is the gorgeous Baltimore Oriole. Here's his sound. It's a beautiful pure whistle. I love the sound. They are gorgeous birds. Here's um, here's my hummingbird feeder uh, outside my uh, former home. And uh, unbeknownst to me at that up until that point, um, Orioles absolutely love hummingbird nectar. So, and they will also come if you put up either nectar or if you put up um, grape jelly. They absolutely are bonkers about grape jelly. Uh, Gracie was frustrated by the bird being right outside my window, but she got. So we have a lot of red birds around Chicago. Most of you are familiar with the gorgeous Northern Cardinal. This of course is the male. The female, as is typical, is, is not bright red. That's that's the call of the Northern Cardinal. And here is the perfectly gorgeous Scarlet Tanager. Uh, I found this bird and photographed it over at Skokie Lagoons here in Northfield. There were actually a pair of them this day. And you can see their call sounds considerably different from the Cardinal. And then uh, here is another tanager. This is a summer tanager. He's all red. He doesn't have the black mask of a cardinal um, and he doesn't have the black wings. So as you can see, uh, he's a very special bird and he's very rare, uh, very surprising to find him at the Grove. Here's his call. This is a summer tanager. Uh, this is an immature male, uh, he, so he shows the yellow that he will molt from, and that's how birds change is they, they can't change the color of their feathers. They have to uh, drop the feathers and grow new ones. So he will be molting into mature plumage soon. Here he is again, same bird. It's the only time I've ever seen one was several years ago. Uh, this was uh, in my backyard. This is a very common bird around here. It's the house finch. Uh, but he does have that nice red head. And that's his call. So bluebirds. Of course, we all know the blue jays of, of our area. They're noisy, but a lot of fun. Unmistakable call. But these are the, this is the Eastern Bluebird, which is also fairly common around here. This one you're not likely to see in your backyard. That's his call. Here's one at the top of a um, pine tree sitting and uh, posing for me. And here's a, here's a bluebird you may not have run across. This is the indigo bunting. Uh, the, the male is blue and the female is actually brown. Uh, this guy was uh, sitting up and, and singing for me. The song is kind of a couplet. 
And here's an indigo bunting in the bird bath in my yard uh, back when I lived in Northbrook. Here's a, a beautiful bluebird that you won't see very often, although you will see them flying. This is a tree swallow. We have a lot of tree swallows around here, but uh, but you don't. They tend to stay very high. This guy gave me a chance to photograph him. For want of a better word, neat colored birds, birds that are not just red or blue. This is the gorgeous cedar waxwing. Uh, it really does have. Um, kind of a, a waxy look to its feathering. Um, and, and note that he has a, a yellow bar at the end of his tail and a red tip at the tip of a uh, red tip of, uh, 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 at the end of his wing. And of course, that's why the, the, the wing looks like it was tipped into some red candle wax. That's why it's got that name. The call is very high. So, some of you may not hear it. If you tend to walk around the slough and Prospect Heights, there's in the spring and summer, there's almost always uh, cedar wax wings to be heard and seen. They do come in flocks. Here's one, uh, a pair of them, a male and a female. And, and uh, note that the bird on the right has got a berry in its beak and they're obviously a mated pair. Uh, He's passing, he passes the uh, berry and the, the lady will, he says, this is for you, my dear. And she says, no, 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 you must have it. They give it back and forth. Finally, one of them gives up and eats it. And of course, many of us who have gardens have had ruby-throated hummingbirds. This is the only common uh, um, hummingbird in our area. Uh, other areas of the country have, have a lot more uh, hummingbirds. And there's probably over 300 species of hummingbirds in the world. But this is our very own ruby-throated, and it's a pretty one. Uh, this is a ring-neck pheasant. Back when I lived in Northbrook, this guy showed up in my backyard one day. I think they're beautiful birds, and, and I'm told they are all around us. Um, here's the call. This bird is something called a gray cat bird. Um, he is, as you can see, all gray with a black cap. And he has, this is, their, this is the bird's vent. And a cat bird's vent is kind of a deep red, as you can see. And cat birds are mimics. So I'm gonna play a typical cat bird call. But if you walk by a bush and you hear a, a bush sounds like it's got about six different species of birds in it, it's probably just a cat bird doing its variety of calls. Here, here's it. A little bit of everything there. Um, this is the common grackle. And nobody, nobody would ever put uh, a grackle on their list as most beautiful bird around. But uh, when you see them in the sunlight, uh, as this guy was, uh, and, and his iridescence is just gorgeous, uh, kind of blue on the head and gold. It's uh, fun, fun to see. Um, and his, his call isn't a thing of beauty, that's for sure. Here's everybody's favorite, the black capped chickadee. Here's their call. Some birds say their names, and the chickadee dee dee is, is one of them. Chickadee dee dee. And here's a common bird uh, that you might see around here. It's the white breasted nuthatch. They tend to come down, they tend to land on the tree and go around the tree. Um, here's his call. <laughs> Unmistakable. You might hear them more often than you actually would see them. Keep your ears peeled for these guys, although they won't be here in the winter. So uh, this is a bird that is that comes to us in the winter time. This is the dark-eyed junco, and uh, you know when the when the red-winged blackbirds leave and the dark-eyed juncos come, you know that you're in for winter. Uh, 
must be a little busy call. And then uh, the very the common morning dove. Uh, they're so common that you tend not to look at them. I thought it was special to get a close up of this guy and you can see the little light blue uh, ring around his eye. Uh, they have kind of a pointy tail and they have a mournful call, which is why they're called morning doves. I always think he's saying hula hoop hoop hoop. But anyway, that's the morning dove. And now we move along to sparrows. And um, I, I hasten to tell you that not all spar sparrows are boring LBJs. And that's birder talk for little brown jobs. Here's one of the handsome ones. This is the white crown sparrow. Here's his song. Beautiful song. This is the white throated. You just saw the white crown. This is the white throated sparrow. Note that he's got yellow. He's got the black and white stripes on the head. He's got yellow in the lores, which is the area between the eye and the beak. The mnemonic for that call is here, poor John Peabody, Peabody, Peabody. And here's a very pretty bird that we only see in the wintertime. It's called a fox sparrow. They have that beautiful speckled look. And here's a call. If you know birds calls, you, you don't have to see them, but it certainly is a lot more fun if you do see them. Here's a chipping sparrow at my feeder. This little guy has kind of a rufousy cap with a white eyebrow and a black eye line. Here's his call. It's a nice, nice trill. And then this is, now we're into grassland birds. This is a grasshopper sparrow. He sounds kind of like an insect, I think you will think. It's very high. Some of you may not hear this. Moving right along. This is a very common bird around here and you might, you might be familiar with the song. It's called the song sparrow and it is identified by that stick pin in, in, the, in the breast. That's what that spot is called, the stick pin. It's a lovely song, very common bird around here. And here's a more rare bird. Uh, you do have to get to the right habitat to see this one and they didn't used to come up here from Southern Illinois, but they're, they are more common around here now. It's called the Henslow Sparrow. I think it sounds like he's sneezing. Anyway, that's the Henslow Sparrow. And then uh, the lovely Savannah Sparrow sitting at the top of a, a dead uh, uh, piece of foliage and singing its heart out. Once again, a high call that people who uh, registers might not hear this bird. And then of course, the unappreciated house sparrow. Nobody likes house sparrows because they are a non-native bird. Uh, they were brought here from England and they were introduced into New York, in New York State. And within a hundred years, they had, they had reproduced so successfully, they had spread all the way to the West Coast. But they still are a rather sweet looking bird and they are very, very common. Um, I guarantee you got those in your yards. So uh, you probably didn't think that you were going to get a lesson on sexual dimorphism, but it just simply means 
the girl, girl birds look different from the boy birds. This is the most common of the examples of this is the handsome male uh, mallard and his very cryptic female. Uh, the, lady, the lady always has this little blue patch uh, on her wing and the male mallard always has that little curl at his tail. So if you're seeing ducks in the water and the lighting is poor and all you're getting is silhouettes, if you see that little curl on the tail, you know what you've got. And here's the rose-breasted grosbeak that we had on the opening screen. These are uh, lovely birds and they are common around here in our woods. Uh, here's the sound. Very rich, throaty. Uh, uh, okay, here's the female. You would almost not believe that that was the same species, wouldn't you? Here's the male. There's the female. But I guarantee you, they go together. Of course, the male cardinal. And here's the lady. Notice the male's red beak and black face. The female has a red beak and a little bit of a black face, but, but they still are completely different looking birds. Here's a, a, a lovely bird that we don't see often enough around here, but they are here. This is the Eastern Toey. And he says, drink your tea, see if you can hear it. Drink your tea. And here's the female Eastern Toey. She has kind of a red eye. Of course, um, this is one of the most beautiful ducks, I think, in the world. This is the wood duck. There's plenty of wood ducks at the Slough and Prospect Heights. Um, they have just incredible feathering that makes all these wonderful facial patterns and this kind of a red orbital ring around the eye. Uh, that's, that's, their, that's their call if you can catch them falling. And here is the female wood duck. Once again, she's very plain and cryptic and, and but she has this nice little eye I ring. And here are some blue winged teals. These are uh, uh, found in this area. The, the males, of course, have this lovely little backward C and a little white patch on the wing. And of course, this is the female. Now, mind you, in breeding season, three, four, five males will be chasing one female. But this is obviously not breeding season when this picture was taken. It's a sweet little quack. Here's the red winged blackbird male. That's a familiar sound. You have plenty, plenty of red winged blackbirds in Prospect Heights. And, and around the slough. This is the male and he's flashing his epaulets to attract a female. And this is his lady friend. Once again, smaller, very cryptic, sits on the nest, no, no call. These are not very popular birds, but they are around here. This is a, a brown-headed cowbird. Now I, most people would say, Mary Lou, how can there be an unpopular bird? Well, the reason there is an unpopular bird is that cowbirds, uh, and this, this is the male's call. But this is, this is the reason why cowbirds are not very popular. The female does, doesn't build a nest and lay her eggs. She lays her eggs in other birds' nests and her eggs are bigger and her babies when they hatch are bigger 
And so they will go to like a warbler's nest, a pretty dainty little warbler, lay their eggs. And when the, the brown-headed cowbird babies hatch out, they just push the, the warbler's babies out of the nest. So that's why brown-headed cowbirds aren't well-loved, but they are still a viable bird. And, uh, and, and warblers have learned how to, what they do is if, if a cowbird comes and lays eggs in their nest, they, just, they will desert the nest and go build another one. Here's, a, here's our beloved American robin with a nice broken eye ring around its eye and a yellow beak. Here's a juvenile uh, American robin. Uh, he's thinking about taking it, but you can see he's scruffy looking. He's because he's just a baby. Uh, and he's thinking about getting in that water and taking a bath. And by gosh, yes, he did, he did decide to go for it. And he was having so much fun. One of his, here he is still, still bathing. Here's one of the other siblings showed up. So um, a really good thing to do is to put water out for birds. Um, it's wonderful to, to give them to them year round. Uh, this uh, little thing has a plug in so that it, in the winter, it, 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 it will stay unfrozen. And of course the water moves. So it does have a tank. So um, it, it's a, a very useful thing for birds and they, they, need, they need water. This was, uh, and, then, and then I love this, the second young one is bathing while dad is standing by. So moving right along to waterfowl and wading birds. Uh, you may or may not have seen some common loons uh, around the slough. They're beautiful birds, just beautiful. They have this wonderful plumage and then that, that deep red eye. That, that call of the loon is, is haunting and beloved. Here was a loon, I was over in Glenview uh, and this guy was, was swimming around in one of the little uh, lagoons close to the road. So I got into the woods and I crept up uh, behind trees while he dove, I would you know, get to a nearer tree. And all of a sudden he came up right in front of me with this fish in his beak. Talk about, talk about a piece of luck. Anyway, he, he dove with his fish and, went away so I never got to see him eat it. Uh, this is a, a snow goose that we had show up at my condominium here in Northfield. This is not a common bird around here but it was, it was fun to be able to include it. Pick up a goose sounding call. And of course everybody knows the uh, Canada geese. They're a bit of a nuisance. Um, in fact, we have swans on our lake here at Meadow Lake just to keep the, keep the Canada geese away. But it's hard to, to not love these little babies. They're awful cute. Familiar call, I'm sure. This is a pair of American coots. Uh, they are known for their uh, white beak with a little, uh, little ring around the tip and their red eye. And they're almost always in pairs. Here's their sound. This is not a common bird around here, but I did get lucky and find it over at Gilson Park in Wilmette. Uh, this is, uh, the, the original name of this bird was the Old Squaw. And of course, somewhere along the line, some, it, it was determined that Old Squaw was not politically correct. So this is now called a long-tailed duck. I personally like Old Squaw, but uh, we gotta be politically correct. Um, those of you who've walked around the slough in Prospect Heights see these great egrets. You've got several of them there. They're beautiful birds. Uh, these were I uh, photographed over at Techni Basin in Glenview. Here's their call. I, I think it's funny that some of the prettiest birds have the ugliest calls. Anyway, this was just a nice shot because it was in the same place, Techni Basin and Glenview. 
you don't often get two birds posing, two different species of birds in the same picture posing for you. Anyway, that's a great egret in the foreground and a great blue heron in the background. And here's a close up of a great blue heron. And uh, I just show you this because uh, great blue herons in breeding plumage do look a little bit different. Their, their plumes are longer and fancier and this guy's pretty fancy. So another sort of heron, but a smaller one is a, um, a green heron. Um, there are green herons at the slough in Prospect Heights. Uh, we saw one last Saturday this fellow was photographed in the marsh to the west of my Northfield Fire Department. Um, he did something that I'd never seen one of them do before. That, that's his call. And, and now he's, now he's, he's looking, he's, he's hunting. And here, He's raised his crest. I've never seen them do that before. So he can hunch down and look like a little old man, or he can extend that neck and, uh, and look smashing. This, uh, this, this is black crown night heron, uh, which I photographed from the uh, window of my condominium. Uh, they, they were formerly, um, uh, over at Skokie Lagoons, but they are, they are now here uh, over uh, west of the fire department. Still nice to see. Not, not much of a call, unfortunately. Uh, here's one of the cutest, cutest birds around. This is an American woodcock. Um, they uh, they have a, a, a flight display that they do during breeding season, which of course is spring, uh, where they, they elevate, they go straight up in the air and flutter their wings and then come down. Uh, they're, they're wonderful birds, uh, but they are nocturnal. So you have to go out at night in order to see them. If, if you do, you will see them. Um, here's their sound. It's kind of an unmistakable peep, peep, peep. If you hear that, you've got to stick around and try to wait to see them go up. Uh, this is the common gull that we have around here. Now, by the way, it is not seagull, it's gull. Uh, ring this is a ring bill gull, and obviously you can see the ring around the tip of its bill, the yellow eye, kind of pinkish legs, very common bird. <laughs> And that's what they sound like in a large group. This is over uh, on the shores of Lake Michigan. This is at Montrose. If you're not familiar with it, uh, Montrose is a migrant trap. It's a, a little peninsula that sticks out into the Lake Michigan. And uh, when birds are migrating, they, they see this, this little peninsula sticking out and drop down there to rest and feed during the day. So this is where I caught this ruddy turnstone. You can see he's really moving because he's off the ground. Not much of a call. This was also down at Montrose. This is a spotted sandpiper. Uh, they had an area uh, roped off for some restoration work, but he was, enjoying hanging out on the fence. Uh, we've had spotted sandpipers at the Prospect Heights Slough. Uh, in fact, we had one last Saturday, I think. Here's, uh, here's his call. Oops, here we go. And you may have heard about all the excitement about piping plovers. This was uh, the one of the piping plovers that came to Montrose. They they have not they have not continued to nest there, Montrose, unfortunately. But I think they are nesting in Ohio, which is very good. They're awful cute little birds. I did see this guy. 
this is a semi-palmated plover. It's a little similar to this. Hold on. Oopsie. I don't want to do that. This is a semi-palmated plover. Semi-palmated means there's a little bit of webbing between their toes. You wouldn't see that unless you had a bird in, in the hand. Um, but it's a cute little bird. And that's his call. And um, some of you may have seen some sandhill cranes migrating. They're wonderful birds. They do migrate up through Illinois and up further north to breed. Um, I think these were a Jasper Pulaski. I love this call. You, you, sometimes you can hear them going overhead. You don't even see them, but if you hear that kind of chuckle call, you know that's what you've got. And of course, they're known for their, their red foreheads. This is this. These are the males, and these are nice, tall birds. They're taller than uh, great blue herons. Here's a pair of them at uh, Crabtree Nature Center, just walking around like they owned the place. This was up at Illinois Beach State Park. So these are these are reasonably common around here. I think they've probably gone through for this fall. Not really sure about that. So here is a killdeer. Uh, this is another one of the birds that uh, says its name, killdeer, killdeer. He, he's known for this, these two rings around his neck and that kind of orangey red eye. Here's his call. See if you can see if he thinks it says its name. Not quite, but oh well. Uh, here are some double crested cormorants. Uh, this is a fish eater. Um, the double crest is not very obvious on this particular bird. Really a gross call. <laughs> But here's, here's what, cor cormorants don't have waterproof uh, feathers. So uh, after they dive and get their fish and eat and have eaten, then they, they come out and climb on, on something and put their wings out to dry in the sun. So this is, uh, these I photographed over at Lake Glenview. And also over at Lake Glenview was this uh, very unusual marble godwit. Uh, this was really, really special. Uh, I've never seen one since, but I have to show it to you because I found it. And then here are some barn swallows. This is the another uh, version of, you saw the blue um, uh, swallow that we had before. This is the barn swallow, which is known for its kind of rusty orange uh, front. They frequently flock as do the And here is the Eastern Kingbird. This is a fairly common bird around here. It has a white belly and most of all, it's, it's delineated, identified by a white band at the end of its tail. Here are some, this was a, this is some babies. Um, and they, I, I wonder if I've got a recording of the babies. Yeah. And here's a very common bird, an Eastern Phoebe, all fluffed out, which is kind of sweet. See if you think this one says its name. Sorry, the background noise is my cat. Um, this is a Virginia rail. These are very skulky birds. They hang out in the reeds. And uh, this is what they sound like. Okay, so that that was a king rail. This is a Virginia rail.
And here's a Virginia rail baby over at Air Station Prairie. The uh, water had dried up, unfortunately. So uh, they, Glenview brought in a hose and put in $300 worth of water to keep these babies alive. Because of course, at this point, the babies can't fly. So anyway, he found a little crayfish, which was great for something to eat. And here's a slightly older Virginia rail baby. And here's a Sora, also a skulky bird, but it has an interesting call. It's kind of a whinny. That whinny is the, is the Sora. And here's a Sora baby at Air Station Prairie. This is the same year that, that the uh, water dried up. Um, well, we've talked about how cute Canada goose goslings, but they do all grow up. Here's a darling house wren. If you've got one of these in your neighborhood, you, you get serenaded a lot. They're, they're sweet looking birds and nice sounding too. And here's a different kind of wren. This is a lot harder to find. It's a marsh wren, and it is frequently found in the sort of reeds that you see it in there. Kind of a buzzier call than this. They're busy, and they have they cock their tail and they hop around in the reeds. Very cute little birds. Here's a. Um, an oven bird. Oh, I guess I don't have a sound for the oven bird. Sorry, guys. Oh, it seemed to be. I wanted to go back to the hermit thrush. And now this is a grassland bird. This is a male bobolink. They're kind of called the upside down bird because typically birds are dark on the top and light on the belly. And this, this is. This is the other way around, kind of cream colored here and then white. It's a charming bubbling call, a bobolink. This is another grassland bird, the dick sissel. It's just a contact chip. Here's a dick sissel really singing. And this is a meadowlark, an eastern meadowlark. They have a gorgeous sound. Not so many of them around these days, but over oh, the tree. Come on. You got a pretty sound. Anyway, this is the uh, skulky brown thrasher. Kind of nice rufous back and that speckledy belly. Very insistent, insistent call. So on to the woodpeckers. This is the famous, the one that we had in the opening screen, the uh, darling little downy woodpecker. And next is the hairy woodpecker. Noticeable difference in size. Uh, similar coloration, but you'll notice that his sound sounds like a bigger bird, noisier. He's he's uh, on suet. This is a suet holder, a homemade suet holder. Birds absolutely love suet. Uh, in the winter, it's a particularly wonderful thing to put out for your birds. Here's a red-bellied uh, woodpecker. This is the female uh, with a little less red on the back of her head. And this is a little house sparrow. That's the red bird. Here's the stunning red-headed woodpecker. This is iconic bird around here. Unfortunately declining, but. There's the one. Just, just a knockout bird. Here's another shot of one. 
when they fly, uh, these white wing patches are very obvious. This is a yellow-bellied sapsucker in the woodpecker family. Uh, it's it's got the red throat and a red head, and they they um, they drill holes in trees, horizontal holes, and, and suck the sap. They don't damage the trees. This is a northern flicker. Uh, this is the male. Uh, he has a crescent on his chest and the red on the back of his head. And there, this is a, a gold, a gilded. Uh, flicker. Un unmistakable call, and we've had these guys at the slough. Uh, moving on to raptors, of course, our most common is the red tailed hawk, uh, and obviously, there's a reason for the name. It's that kind of a scream call. This is a red tailed hawk soaring. Um, this is a, I took this over at Air Station Prairie in Glenview. Now, it, because you're looking at the under of the tail, you don't see the red, but this belly band is also typical of a, of a red tailed hawk. And here's a Cooper's hawk that I, it's much smaller than. Uh, the red tail, uh, and I found this guy up at Chicago Botanic Garden. And here's an osprey. Um, at the SLU, uh, the Commonwealth Edison has recently put up a platform in hopes of attracting, attracting osprey to nest. We know they're in the area because we've seen them there when we've been doing our bird walks. Um, and uh, they are known to take a while to get used to a new uh, nesting location, but once they cho choose to nest there, they will be very uh, reliant about coming back again and again. Here's their call. Yeah, nice, nice big bird. This is a smaller um, raptor. This is an American kestrel. It's our smallest falcon. This was in rehab. This little tear uh, from the eye is typical. These are jesses. This is how you, you hold a bird in, in captivity. This is an American kestrel in the wild. They're beautiful birds, just so sweet. Pretty noisy. And then the, not, the unlovely turkey vulture. They are nature's cleanup committee, so you don't you don't hate them, but they aren't the most beautiful bird in the world. They have a bare head because they're carrion eaters. And, um, and that makes you understand why they don't need to have, since they eat carrion, they don't need feathers on their head. Here's their call. Kind of a hiss. Strange sound of bird. Of course, everybody loves bald eagles. This guy was taken a photograph over at State at Star Rock State Park. Another shot of a bald eagle. Here's a peregrine falcon. Uh, peregrines are lovely birds. Uh, this one was injured. And when she, by the time she got rehabbed, she could not be safely released. I think something was wrong with this wing. So she is a pet now of a gal that does bird rehabbing. So, but you rarely get to see a, a peregrine in the wild like this. That's her, her kind of quiet call. So moving right along to the warblers, which are the, ju the gems, of the jewels of the bird world. This is a black and white warbler. This is the spectacular black Bernian warbler. These guys are very small and very fast, extremely difficult to photograph. This is a chestnut side of warbler who, who caught himself a, a caterpillar. 
This is a golden winged warbler. This is, this is not my photograph, but it is a beautiful bird and I've never gotten a shot of it. Here's a yellow rump warbler. These are very common, very common in the spring. And this is in breeding plumage. What you can't see in this picture is that he does indeed have a yellow rump. And here's the gorgeous magnolia warbler that these are one of my favorites. They're unmistakable with that black necklace. That's the sound. This is the bay breasted warbler, not a great shot, but you take with, with warblers, you, you're glad to get anything. High, very high pitch song. This is a Cape May warbler has that kind of a cheek patch. This is the American red start. This is the female. And this is her boyfriend, the male. He's once again, the flashy one. This is a common yellow throat. This is fairly common bird. That, that mnemonic is witchety, witchety, witchety. This is the stunning black throated green warbler and a prothonotary warbler. These have been nesting over at Skokie Lagoons for the last four or five years. Gorgeous birds. That's that insistent. I hope they come back this spring. Owls. Great horned owls, everybody's favorite bird. This was at a photo shoot up north. That, <laughs> Owls don't usually give you such a good ch chance. This guy was came to a photo shoot. This is a great horned owl owlet. This is over at, at Lake Arlington. <laughs> Funny looking little things. Here's a barred owl. There's considerably different sounding than a great horn. You 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 might start hearing these in in uh, December January this year. This is an Eastern screech owl. He's very high. These are teensy little owls. They're about this big. Nice little trill. Here's a Northern saw wet owl. This was down at Montrose at the Magic Hedge uh, one year. Here's long-eared owls. A bunch of long-eared owls showed up at a, a place down in the south, mm -hmm. south of the loop one year. Mm -hmm. Here's a better shot. One of them came out to give me a better, better look. Mm -hmm. But here, this is the shot that I think you'll enjoy. There are four long-eared owls in this very sparse pine. Here's one. Here's two, here's a third, and here's the fourth. It's, it's hard to believe that they can, they, can, they can be so cryptic and a very spare tree. <gasps> then we found a snowy owl one year. They, they are rare around here. One winter, this guy showed up. We drove out. That's what's called it. It was out in Ogle County several winters ago. These are just a few other things. We're past the birds now. Painted turtles, a muskrat, a Baltimore check checker spot butterfly, nectarine on rudbeckia, a buckeye butterfly, tiger swallowtail, monarch on butterfly weed and this you really want to plant this to get monarchs we, we need to save our monarchs these are beautiful uh, great spangled fritillaries on thistle and this is uh this is a, not a species from around here but we did find this zebra swallowtail down in southern illinois and a white-faced meadow hawk dragonfly and a 12-spotted skimmer dragonfly 
and an eastern pond hawk dragonfly, a female. Can you see the wings? They're transparent. And a frog and duckweed over at Crab, Crabtree Nature Center. And I love this. This white-tailed deer was at the grove. I was looking at the birds and the doe was watching me watch the birds. New York Aster at Lake Glenview last fall. A coyote on the bike path. Coneflowers at Bluff Spring Fen. You can enjoy birds and other outdoor wonders 12 months a year in the Chicago area. And I encourage you to do that. Wishing you many bluebirds of happiness. Thanks for watching, folks. Thank you, Mary Lou. That was wonderful. We'll take questions now. If you're on Zoom, please put it in chat. If you're in the library room, we'll be out to get your questions. Hi, Mary Lou, can you hear me? Yes. Great. I'm curious. You said that the uh, blue eyed junco or the dark eyed junco dark was junko. in the winter. Yeah. What, what other birds can we see in the winter? Ones that stick around. Which ones are they? Oh, well, the cardinals, um, the house sparrows. I think we probably have jays here in the winter. Um, uh, you know, it's not, it's not, I, I can't remember what else we've got here in the winter time. I'll let you know this winter. Yeah, I know we have a lot of the brown sparrows in our yard and they never seem to disappear. <laughs> and <laughs> well, they just uh, that's take that's over the bird feeder. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it is a little frustrating. Um, but, oh, I, you know, if, if, if people who are listening do feed birds, one of the best places to buy bird feed, if, if, if they're going through your seed fast, you want to go up to Gray's Lake Feed Mill. That's where you can get the feed much cheaper than you can get it at the local hardware store. And they also turn their feed over faster. So it's, um, it's a, a very good place to go. It's maybe a 20 minute drive up there. Really good. worth doing. So I, um, I do encourage everybody to feed birds, particularly in the winter, particularly um, if you start in the summer, it's, it's very important that you continue feeding through the winter because they've come to rely on coming to your place. So. Mary Lou, someone in the event room wants to know if those sandhill cranes migrate over Chicago. Uh, I'm not so sure if they go over Chicago. They do, but uh, probably not downtown, but yes, over us, over the suburbs. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, they, they wouldn't, uh, and you wouldn't want them to either because of the, you know, actually those birds migrate very much higher than the city buildings, but, but you wouldn't want them over the city. We've seen them fly over the library around yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I said, that, Crabtree Nature Center is just a little bit further west than you. I've you know, seen them walking around. Those pictures I had of them stalking around on the grass. In fact, I think they breed. They actually, there's a pair that's been breeding at uh, Crabtree for years. So. Uh, uh, Dana, Dana commented that he sees them in the month of November. Sand hills. Yes, the sand hills. Good. Um, do you have a bird walk coming up, Mary Lou, on um, October 8th? Uh, with, yes, I believe that's right. We just had one last nice park district. Yeah, we just had one last Saturday. Um, and if anybody is interested in joining that walk, I think they have to contact the park district and register. The, the walks are free. Um, we have a lot of fun. We see a lot of good birds. Uh, they start at 7.30 at the Isaac Walton 
uh, pavilion there off M Elmhurst Road. Um, but uh, you do have to register and you do need to have a pair of binoculars. Um, it's, not, it's not productive to try to watch birds without binoculars. So if you don't have binoculars, uh, just uh, we, we do have some, to, some loaners. Um, so I don't know if there's room on the upcoming walk in October, but we'd be delighted if any of you would like to join us. Um, I'm sure uh, the park district would be glad to hear from you. Okay, Mary Lou, let me just check the chat and see if there's any other questions. Okay. All right, no, that's it. Wonderful, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm amazed at the all the different variety of birds we have around here. We'll have to uh, be patient and look for them. I right, guess that's, yeah. good idea, absolutely good idea. Be patient, feed birds in the winter and uh, You'll never, you'll be surprised at what you'll find in your yard. So I, I thank everyone for listening and um, wish you good birding. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you for joining us. Sure. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you.